we got some training we're going to be doing tonight. Um, some of you guys know this stuff front and back. Some of you guys are just learning it. You start yours. yours. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah, Let's do it. Yes. And uh, Dan's going to check on the people with the food. And in a moment, we're going to go around the room, not immediately, but I'd like to know who you all are and what you do and all this stuff. I'll start with myself. I am Chris Haskins. I'm, I'm a real a estate guy. I've been in the business since 2004. Right. Okay. Lost a whole bunch of houses in 2008. Here, and foreclosures and all that stuff. I did it the wrong way starting out, using <sighs> banks, turning in tax Who's returns, it? turning in bank applications, getting loans and all that stuff. How many people are doing business like that right now? All right, how many people want to stop doing it like that? Yeah. All do right. you know what I do in my red bag? How are you doing? Thanks for coming, red brother. Bag. So I, I consider that from my perspective, not to say it has to be you, that was the wrong way for me. I got sick and tired of begging banks for loans. Eric's heard this before. I just, it, it just didn't work for me because after I lost all those houses to foreclosure, I couldn't get a loan anyway. All right. So today we're going to talk about this, something called private money. And I've got some new tricks and trades I'm going to give y'all because I, I, I consider you sacrificed your dollars to come here tonight. I want to give you something that you can deploy right now. Somebody say right now. Yes. Uh, so we're going to talk about private money. That's like my specialty. I've, I've kind of been studying this thing since 2007. Uh, I and consider myself a master at it, but I want to make sure that we're all on the same page because I want you to attract this money. Everybody say attract. Attract, attract. attract this, this, this financing. Uh, by the, by, show by the raise of hands, how many people in here are, are already using private money to buy real estate? You got one, two, three, four, five. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm proud of you guys. Right. How about people using, are you guys using IRA money to do that? Okay, cool. So you're good. Good, good for you. You got to be te- you give here teach with me, brother. You know how to do that. So today, one of the things that I want to kind of break into is opening is working with IRAs. All right, IRAs, individual retirement accounts. Okay, this has been one of my secrets, and I'm I'm still crafting it and honing it and making sure that it works good. Because every day, uh, my mentor says, Chris, I want you to have a beginner's mindset. They call it a Yoshin Yoshin mindset, Shoshin. Because Dan and I can kind of get on our soapbox and bang our chest because we do deals, been doing, he's been doing it. I'm damn real, 1989. You know, we all get like that. (laughs) We can can get like that sometimes. But it's good to have a beginner's mindset because you always learn something. You never know. I, I can learn something from each one of you guys just as well as you guys can learn something from us. So a while back, I was trying to just build my list of lenders. How's food? Do they need to order? No, no, we're good. 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 Okay, cool. So they're going to be serving y'all, and we'll we'll get ordering ordering in a minute. I was in 2008. I started losing houses to foreclosure. Boom, 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 left and right, and I didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I'm laying in a bed, looking up at the ceiling, like Chris. I know there's another way. So I stumbled on this private money. But fast forward until today, I am learning that you could actually. Do a search for IRAs. Does anybody understand that concept? You can actually search for these things. And I'm like, you know what? Let me see if I can deploy this thing. So I did a search last week before I even came here. So as I was thinking about you guys today, I wanted to make sure that we give you value. And for some of us, we still are under the premise that somebody else is going to finance our hopes, dreams, and aspirations. All right, and I just want to make sure I pull you guys here for a moment, make sure everybody's here. Because if we have the mindset that somebody else is going to put up all the money for you to go out there and try to buy real estate, to try to fix and flip, to try to learn how to be a property manager, to try to maintain tenants, to try to manage real estate, I don't think we have the right mindset. And if you were anything like me at the beginning of my career, I would always look for other people to put up all the money. That was my main thing. Everybody's been taught OPM, right? Has anybody else been taught OPM? Like, you know, don't be using none of your money. So I just want to make sure that we understand that I don't think that that is necessarily the, the best way to grow your real estate empire. Thank you, my friend. All the money we spend with these guys, they want to give me, <laughs> give me some coffee. Pass that that way, my brother. Just take one and pass it down. This is gold, y'all. 
This is the gold. Somebody say gold. Gold. It's my cousin, y'all. They look good. It's the smile. It's the smile. So I want to make sure I bring you guys here, not necessarily thinking that I'm going to get somebody to finance all my deals, but you know what? Let's go ahead and get into this, y'all. Let's get into your handout. I want us to, first blank we have here. The sausages, they're going to bring those out? To help us with the mindset of raising money. Stop pitching a return on investment. Everybody's looking for ROI. What's my ROI? What's my ROI? What are we going to get, right? A lot of us can get in the mindset of we're trying to promise these people these crazy ROIs to loan us money, right? I'm gonna, you're going to do business with me because I'm going to pay you 8%. Do business with me because I'm going to pay you 10%. Stop pitching a return on investment and start pitching a return of investment, okay? What do I mean by that? The people we deal with are ordinary moms and pas, y'all. They're regular people going to church every day, going to work. And if you're coming at them like, I got this great idea, I don't want to go too deep into it. Dan and I did something together recently with some crypto stuff together, right? And it was a crazy ROI, (laughs) our return on investment. Right. But what was our return of investment? Zero. (laughs) So Dan and I do things high risk. So I ain't going to lie to you. Sometimes you make a mistake. I ain't gonna tell them, but we lost we lost money. We lost money, right? Zero. Because we were concerned with what? <laughs> Return, Return on investment. On investment, right? I want y'all to understand this. So when you're approaching these people, when you're looking at Ma and Pa to loan you money, yes, you need to say Ma and Pa, we're gonna make all we're gonna crush it. We're gonna do this, 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 we're gonna make money. But what I have learned from raising money since 2008 is that the people that loan us these type of deals to finance our real estate are more concerned with their return of investment, right? They want to know if something happens to you, if you get hit by a bus, struck by lightning, or a UFO picks you out and takes you out of here, how do I get my money back? So from, uh, I wanted to t- talk to you and train you all tonight. Make sure you focus on that first Everybody say first. First, first. Focus on return of investment. So as I was in a bed last night thinking about talking to y'all, I'm like, the return of investment is going to be the security and the skill set that you are going to develop, not only here, but over time. Like we got an acquisition this year, so he understands buying at the discount is what gives your private lender the security. All right, so what does that look like? I'm going to let you guys see my prospectus here. This is my prospectus that we use every time we borrow money from a new lender. Okay, so y'all can see this. Buying at a discount, this is where you're building in your equity, okay? I'm going to pass it around. You're building in your equity by buying Below. Everybody say below. Below market value. So what a lot of people do is they want the lender to go out there and take all the risk and put up all the money. And then you're like, you know what? All I got to do is go sign a paper. Um, I want to make sure I say this lovingly. And it's not I'm here, you're there, above, below, better, worst. I do not have a problem raising money. I do not have a problem raising money for any of my real estate deals. Dan, do you? No, but can I elaborate on that? Lovingly. I want to make sure that we, um, this is not a I'm here, there thing. I'm going to elaborate on that. You mind? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. ahead. So Chris and I don't have that issue because, like Chris has so famously said, we have a role behind us. You mind asking him just to move down because David's going to sit here. Just move down. Okay, one. So Chris and I don't have a problem raising want to take money a chair or just no no move down one, one David, chair. David's okay. gonna sit here okay because we have a road Thanks behind so us like Chris says right Chris says am I coming down too yes okay. our road behind us is essentially Sorry about our that. experience right so what happens is that people see Chris thank Haskins you. on social media thank you brother people see me on social media but not only do are they willing to lend us money because they see us on social media, but they're willing to lend us money 
because we have documented proof on how many deals we've done, right? We have documented proof on that we've been able to overcome the challenges that this business constantly represents or presents itself, right? You know, there's people in this room that are experiencing that now. Eric Bellamy, <clears throat> we're on the phone once a week, right? Talking about the challenges with the buildings, apartment, and things like that, right? You know, Hyman's going through that now where he's converting one family into a two family in the Bronx. You know how difficult that is to do in New York City? That's outrageous, right? Even the thought process. Wow. Matthew's killing it in, in Philadelphia, but he, he said he said he got his quote unquote, you got your ass handed to you, right? With that first deal. <laughs> right? Yeah, is, is that what you told me? Yeah. Right? But now how's the second one gone? It's a three. Right. So now what's gonna happen is wow. there are gonna be people in your family, in your circle, your friends, your your you know, people that you go to work with, and 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 they're gonna see, damn, Matthew's doing his tenth deal. Now they're gonna feel comfortable giving him money. <laughs> or lending him money. Right. So but now in the beginning part, that's not going to be that in the, in the beginning of your career. That's not as easy to do as it is will be as it will become for Eric and Matthew. Right. Or as it is as easy for my for, 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 for Chris, myself and my brother. Right. Because we have that road behind us. So what Chris is teaching you now. Is essential. If for anything else, this is the part that you guys need to listen to, because this guy has mastered this. When I met Chris in 2019, he was like, why are you still doing no, it? I know he wasn't even doing it. I was like, because I don't want to go out with hat in hand. <laughs> Remember that? And what did Chris tell me? He said, bro, you're doing people a favor when you borrow money from them. You're giving them a bigger return. It's secured against, the, against real estate. They're not going to lose even if you drop dead. They got the real estate. Right? And they're getting a higher percent than they would in the bank. So since then, we've been doing private money. Because I listened to what Chris said, and I learned from what he's about to teach you all. So you guys better really be paying attention to what Chris is saying right now, because I don't think you guys understand the value that you have value. in front of you. Yeah, we'll get, we're going to do quiz, if you don't mind, holding questions for the video. We'll do, please. Ask that. When do we ask questions? At the very end. <laughs> 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 you messing with me. At the end. Thank you. Please get your Q and A. We we'll get your pen and write the questions on your uh, card there. So the mindset was, I was thinking, return of investment on number one on your sheet there. Hmm, this number one, return of invest of investment. Does everybody understand return of investment? All right, I want to hear it. return of investment. Thank you. So Ma and Pa, when you meet them, it's so crazy because people approach me all the time to be a lender. I'm like, I am a lender now, right? I just loaned a guy. Some money we came back last week. The first thing that I want to know is, what are they bringing to the table? What you bringing to the table? So don't come to me to put 100% up for a deal you doing. I mean, I'm just like, I thought we had this. I'll talk to the guys. I'm like, why are you asking me to put up all your money? See, the universe understands if you're not willing to put up something for yourself, how can you expect someone else to put up everything for you? You know, it took me a long time to comprehend this thing. So it's weird. The more you put up for your own deals, <laughs> do you know other people will fight and claw their way in to put money into your deals? It is the craziest thing I have ever seen. The more money that I use for my own, it's, it is amazing how the more people will want to give me their money to do deals. Right? I don't know why it works like this. Maybe it's somebody, my cousin's into metaphysical stuff. He might... The, the more that I'm putting in, they're like, hey, I got this, I got that. I'm like, I don't even, I don't even, I don't even want it. I mean, I, I don't even ask you for it. So we have, we have turned ourselves into something that I call a money magnet. And one of the things that I have mantra, you might have heard me say it before, I say it all the time in private and public. I am a money magnet. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> if y'all want to repeat after me, I'm a money magnet. I'm a money magnet. Thank, thank you, you, thank, thank you, you, thank you. <laughs> I don't know why it works, but it works. All right. So we have created uh, magnetism to attract money. And I'm going to show you here one of the ways, but social media is a way. And if you don't have your social media popping after today, please let today be the day that you start, because that's one of the ways that we attract all type of finance. People will find you on social media and they'll say, I've got this. I've got that. What can you do with this? Because they see the road, as Dan says, the road behind you. There's some seats right here, brother. Name tag over there if you don't mind. 
So let's go to everybody follow me so far. So far, you got equity, you built your equity in. Y'all see this? Build your equity in. That's where your profit is. Now, when we're borrowing money, you are last on the totem pole, right? Usually when people are coming to us to loan, to borrow money, they're thinking about their profit, right? When I go to borrow money, my, my mindset is return of capital, number one. Number two is profit for investor. That's number two. And number three is what? That's my profit, right? So it's three there are three legs, if you will, to borrowing or turning yourself to be attractive to money. Return of capital. Investors profit or lenders profit. And then, like, if you could just imagine way down the line is your little stinky little profit. Right. Because I ain't worried about you making no money. I, 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 I'm not thinking about. You guys making profit. I'm worried about Ma and Pa's return on their money, right? And it's weird. When people can tell when you approach them where your focus is. If you're sitting down with somebody that's got a ton, uh, 100, 200,000, and you're talking about making all the profit you're going to make, where do you think they're, where, how do you think they're, they're going to uh, look at you, right? If you turn it around, turn it around, y'all. We have to turn it around. Miss Smith. This is how we're going to forget all the money we're going to make. I know we're going to make money together. I know we're going to. This is how you're secured if I get hit by a bus. Boom, 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 boom. Right? We got a deed of trust against the property. Let's go. Number two, second line. We work with ordinary people to finance our real estate deals. That's what we're talking about here. Ordinary people. Line number two. I didn't put a number here because they change all the time. We work with ordinary people to finance our real estate deals. You must pay a fair rate of return called the APR. Does there, who knows what APR is? Annual percentage rate. Annual percentage rate. Please, I know y'all know what that was. Y'all just didn't say nothing. <laughs> Annual percentage rate. We don't be giving out part of the profit. We don't do back end profit on split. We don't do that. I have learned not to do that. I used to do that back in the day. What type of dummy move was splitting 30 40% profit with a lender that just put the money up where I managed it, found the deal, did the contractor, and had to sell it, and then they're giving away 40% of the profit. How many dummies would do that, right? I should never have done that. I cut that out way long ago. So we pay APR, the same thing that we pay to the bank. It's the same exact thing. So they get a deed of trust. We talk about their security. If I get hit by a bus, Miss Smith, you'll liquidate the property and you'll get paid based on the lien against the property. Everybody got that? You get paid on the lien on the property. The, the property cannot be sold unless you get paid, right? So you want to take yourself, it's magic. The more that the deal is not on your shoulders, like if you're not the only way this thing makes money, people will be more happy to give you, to finance you, all right? They'll, 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 be, they'll be more than happy. Uh, you must pay a fair rate of return called APR. Number one, two, three, four. Our next line, we give our lenders a mortgage or you can put slash deed of trust against the house. We give our lenders a mortgage against the property. So if anything happens to us, they foreclose, they take the property. So it's really not about them winning. They're going to win whether you win or not. I don't, and once again, I want to repeat, I don't care if you make money at all regarding using fi private money. I want my and Pa's money secured and I want them taken care of. Okay. If you approach it like that, you won't have a problem borrowing money. It's, it's just, it's, it's just not a problem because people are always looking for what? A place to put their capital. Go ahead, yeah, hit it. Yep. You know, Chris just hit on something. Oh, there's no one. Chris just said, Chris just said something that um, makes a difference. And there's a couple of you here. I know Mario will definitely understand what I'm about to say. Your investors get paid first. Your private lenders get paid first, even if it means you made no money. Mm -hmm. Because one private lender, one person bad mouths you, 100 people hear it. Right? 
That plus, at the end of the day, you still got to go to sleep. And if you run your business ethically and the right way, don't run. We're not going to run. We, you don't run this business like a politician, right? When something goes wrong, what politicians do? They go like that, right? <laughs> it's like everyone else's fault, right? In this business, when something goes wrong, it's our fault. It's our fault. Our right? fault. So everything, everything, and you have to dive and you have to fall on that knife. Because if you don't, you can't go back to that well. No. Or any other wells that are associated with that well. That can be hard. So you make sure that that investor gets paid, even if it means you got to take 10000 20000 out of your pocket. Right now, not every deal is going to be a good deal. Sometimes you're going to lose. That's the reality of this business. The point is, though, you win more than you lose. Just pay, always pay your investor, would you not say? Yeah, I don't care about their profit. They just told them that. Yeah, I don't care. You have to make sure your investors are paid, y'all. Because what happens when you, uh, it's crazy how I'm learning in business. It's like, it's like these little layers, right? You pay somebody back, goes, your stock goes up, 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 up. You screw somebody over, your stock starts going down, right? The more you do good, it compounds. It's truly amazing. My mentor says golden BBs. Don't worry about looking for the silver bullet. Focus on the golden BBs, right? All little things add up, add up, add up, add up. Then one day you don't have to worry about financing. So, yes, my last line for private money, then I'm done with y'all. We're searching for IRA accounts, individual retirement accounts. This is magic. The good thing about retirement accounts is the person that has the account can't spend the money. They can't spend it. So every time... When we do a deal in my IRA, right, I have to give it to somebody else. I have to. Like, I cannot, I, I can't take the money and spend it on myself. So you come along and then you approach these people and you're like, hey, Miss Smith, we'll, we'll get to that in a minute. We're, we're searching for IRA accounts at the courthouse. 